Welcome back to Marbella Now. My name is Nicole King. Hey, hey, it's a brand new day. Welcome back to another week of what's going on behind the scenes in Marbella. Now, it has been very, very hot, no hotter than every year, but certainly noticeable that we're in the midst of the summer. Please do keep yourselves protected and hydrated above all. It is so important also when we go out with our doggies, we make sure that the floor's not too hot. Be very careful to keep yourselves in the shade. And as I say, very important to keep hydrated. I'm delighted to welcome to the programme, to start off, Louise, o Louise O'Connor. I met her first through Sam Campbell's Business First Group, and she's here today to talk about wellness. She's a health coach, she's a life coach, she's basically a little bit of everything to make sure that we eat the right things and do the right things to make the most of ourselves, I think is the synopsis, right Louise? Yeah. Just how can we be our best ourselves? best of ourselves. I think for me, I assert myself that true health is obviously a byproduct of your diet, your lifestyle and your mental health. And that's what I try and integrate into my therapy style of work. When so did you become to... conscious and conscientious about what you eat and how you actually look after yourself? Oh, wow. Good question. A long time ago, actually. I trained as a nutritionist back in 2003. So I've been in the game for quite a long time. And then probably for the past eight, nine years, I've been working more on the psychology side of things. It's amazing how we look after the car that we love, or if we've bought a new sofa, we want to keep it clean. And yet the most important thing we have in our life is our body, the vessel that carries us around. And yet we put such rubbish in it. We wouldn't give our plants Coca-Cola. We wouldn't even think of it because we know that wouldn't be good for it. Why do you think it is that we've got so many of us off the right track of how to actually eat and look after ourselves? I think, to be honest with you, as human beings, we're only motivated by two things, and that's pain and pleasure. So sometimes eating the pizza and watching Netflix is pleasure. But then obviously the, the motivation of pain is the push and that's generally when somebody takes action. And it doesn't have to be that they're on the floor or they have an illness. It can be just something what actually just gives them that initial nudge to push us into taking action. Unfortunately, that is the one thing that most people are motivated by the pain, motivation, not the pleasure. So it's about getting the internal rewards. It's funny, isn't it, how we us. wait till disaster strikes yeah, or like generally. really your back's against the wall and that's yeah. when we decide to make a change. The benefit of having people like yourselves is that also if we do come to a realisation that we want to do something, I imagine again many people like myself don't even know where to begin because, OK, you want to eat better and people say, well, don't eat this or eat the other and it really doesn't mean anything unless, like with anything, you've studied it and understand the concepts of putting it all together. I think that's what started me going into the psychology because obviously with nutrition, most people know what to eat and it's a case of why you're not doing it. So then it's, it's gonna be behavioral. That's the behavioral work, what you need to do. Again, most people aren't actually aware you know, we're on autopilot, so all our actions, impulses, behaviours are just automatic that we're not actually aware of it. So that's always going to be the first skill you teach is to become aware of what you're actually doing right. and, and the consequences. We, right, because we do, we just function on automatic pilot. Yeah. And so being aware, because a lot of talk nowadays about mindset being present, yeah. but that is obviously the key then to everything else. If you can catch yourself worrying or catch yourself shoving down pizza just because you're bored or whatever it is. Yeah. It's the being aware that it's happening. Yeah, I think any sort of destructive behaviour is, is always emotional. You know, if somebody overeats, it's not food, is not the issue, it's the emotional problem. So we have to get deeper into that. And that's where the inner work starts, to be honest with you. Obviously, we need to know how to eat correctly. So you can teach somebody things like that. But the inner work is obviously going to be the behavioural work, which is the psychology behind it all. 
with this um, thinking of eating well, what would be for you the recommended things that one should eat every day in the sense of, well, it goes without saying. What would be those things that for go me, without saying? Okay, for me, the key for a diet is diversity. So you'd look at your different food groups. So if you look at protein, that would include different types of meat, fish, eggs, dairy. And then, of course, you have your fats, so different types of fats into your diet. And then, of course, carbohydrates. And again, an abundance of colour. We don't eat enough enough plants most people if you actually and this is interesting when you do ask for a food diary most people actually eat 20 different types of food and when i first initially say i'm going to ask you to incorporate 30 different plants into your diet it's like what and then obviously they realize and that's where the awareness comes it's just getting a diversity and colors that's well, the main you're talking thing about color but for something i have in my mind for in an english dish for example is that you always have to have carrots because you need the colour. That when I'm like, I think I grew up like, okay, the plate doesn't have the right colours on it, but we don't obviously eat as much fresh produce as we used to because we're just so busy. Yeah, of course it is. We've got to adapt to the modern life. You know, what worked for somebody in our ancestors or our grandparents, they didn't have the stresses in the life the same. So obviously it's just, an, again, if you go into a supermarket, you know, we, we didn't have the products what we used to have, what we what we have now. So I think it was just more natural. And now, unfortunately, we have what we're called, not processed food, but ultra processed food. And you could go into ultra, ultra processed food now. I have to say that I've <clears> noticed <throat> that when I've eaten something, say, from the the overseas shop, something that you just like remember from back home and you mm. get these packaged foods that afterwards you feel so much heavier. It's kind of like you can actually notice when you're eating something that's good for your body and when it's not because you get that heaviness that we shouldn't really have, I, yeah, I assume, after eating. Yeah, anything what's going to be processed is going to be high in sugar. So the initial, the roller coaster is going to go up, but what comes down has to come down, you know, what goes up comes down. So it's obviously the processed food is generally all your hidden sugars. And that's a big problem, what we have to look at. And, you know, when you eat it, and again, when I start initially asking people to eat more fruit and vegetables, I've yet to meet somebody who says, actually, I don't feel any benefit whatsoever. They always come back and say, I feel more. It's not a case of actually looking at the externals. It's more about I have more clarity. I'm sleeping better. You know, I, I, I can just, oh, I can't think of words now. Just, they just feel better, more energised and just having that clarity, which I think is really important. Talking about clarity, I know that you also help people go through menopause. Yes. And one of the symptoms of menopause is this fuzzy head. Yeah. I was right there myself, apart from the heart palpitations and those infernal heat attacks that came from the inside out, something that we could never experience before. But then also the change in reaction to foods and this fuzzy head. What kind of approach do you take to this uh, situation? Okay, when it comes to obviously menopause, that is obviously we're going to be looking at hormone imbalance there. So that has a massive impact on way, where we operate, to be honest with you. It's not going to last forever. So it's a big passion of mine. I'm at that age now where I'm transitioning to that age. So yeah, it is a serious thing. Um, obviously diet does play a key into helping with symptoms things like brain fog, um, if it's hot flushes. So, for example, brain fog, again, you're going to take out the sugar. Um, things like um, if there is hot flushes, you're going to look at spicy foods, a lot of dark colour vegetables like aubergines and things aren't going to help. And again, stress management, massively important. So diet does play a key, but it's like the piece, it's a piece of the pie. Hormones do play a part. Unfortunately, when we are depleting in hormones, that does play a big impact on how we're going to respond to certain things and environments and things. There's a lot to deal with as a woman, isn't there? There is, there is a lot to deal with, especially a modern day woman. I've spoken to a lot of women, you know, my, my mum, for example, she said, I don't know what this menopause is all a fuss about. Never bothered me. I said, mum, but we'd all left home when you reached menopause. You was on your own with dad, you know, you didn't, you wasn't working. Where I think, obviously, we're delaying having children and women are busy. We're busier than ever. So we've got all the modern day stresses as well. So women do really struggle. 
and I think it's about time that we did speak about it because it's not an illness, it's not a disorder. We are depleting in hormones, so we have to really, really look after ourselves at this part of our life. It's very difficult, I think, for people to reach out for help, particularly very capable women, mothers, working career women, men. How do you think that we can encourage them to contact someone like yourself because it's like, oh, it's okay, I'm fine. Oh, I can cope. Oh, I'll do this one day. And yet having someone like yourself, I would imagine helps you actually start and then keep on the right track and yeah. to learn new habits. But how do we get people to reach out and ask? I think you, you was right. A lot of people don't because they're doers and they keep going and keep going. And unfortunately, people do generally reach out where they reach a point. It's that, again, that pain motivation pushes them to take action. I think... You know, as human beings, we are here to work with tribes. That's how our brain is developed. We can't do everything on our own, but society is led that we can, especially women. You know, we're led to be, we've always got to be slim, we've got to look beautiful, we've got to be able to raise our children up, we've got to be able to keep a well-kept house. And then on top of that, we've got to be able to be a businesswoman. So I think it's just accepting we can't do everything. And again, it's taking that vulnerability and that authenticity to step back and say, actually, put your hand up. I do need help in this department. You've been dealing with dietary needs and then also the psychological aspect for many years. Yes. Have you noticed a change with the publishing world putting such an emphasis on the physical aspect and not looking natural in the sense we are encouraged to look like something artificial? and intangible images that we see that are yeah. so changed and touched up and filtered and yet the generations I think aren't appreciating how far that is from the natural being. Yeah. Have you noticed a, a change oh, in huge, how psychologically huge, that is yeah. creating yeah, um, more issues? I think body confidence is you know body image is a big issue i think it always stems in teens early teens but actually interesting enough it stems again at perimenopause that's where you really see the difference and i think what we've what we've got to remember is if you go back to marilyn monroe she was portrayed as you know it was it was in it's a fashion statement it's gonna do its full circle i say just bear with me you know we are we, then we had what in the early 90s kate moss the wafer look, you know, we've got the Kim K's now. So it's just a fashion thing, but I think obviously people are taking the extremes. Obviously when you're looking at surgery and actually changing the body, I think there is, there is a gray area there. There is extremes and it's, it's, it's very difficult in the, to navigate that, especially for the youngsters. But even as just women, you know, to always look perfect. We're not, we're imperfectly perfect. We're imperfectly perfect. Yes. And I think that's definitely the message that we need to promote within our youth and just amongst everybody, that it's okay to be oneself and not perfect. That's think, kind of like yeah, our beauty. That, it is, it's about teaching. Ourselves. And this is something what I teach is being authentic, show up as your true self. And again, that is gonna be the self-worth issue. And I believe we all have it. And it's really understanding that. And when you understand that, you can, that's the inner work. You can step out and be your true, authentic, unapologetic self, which is what I empower, especially for the women, the young women and women my age as well. So who should be calling you right now? When we finish and they watch this and they're like, OK, well, I need, I would like support in. Give us a list, a little rundown of everything that okay, you I've... specialise in, because that's obviously your passions are where you've taken your, your direction. Yeah, obviously I have a passion for the perimenopause and menopause, but I, just really working with females from young adults up to women in whatever age. And I think it's more, again, it's about looking after your physical health, your emotional health and your behavioral health in general. And so it's everything from losing weight, maintaining weight, um, being your authentic self, which would be anything to do with confidence, self-esteem, low self-worth, relationships, communication, and just being able to show up and live a life truly being happy. I suppose, really, in a nutshell, I teach people how to be happy. Well, I think a lot of times we don't appreciate what we have 
thinking that there's something better on the other side. The grass is always greener. Yeah, and living in the through. present moment, being in the here and now, because unfortunately most people are ruminating about the past or the, the thinking about the future. And, you know, the, the moment now is the, most important, is the most important and we need to start living in that. Wonderful. What brought you to Spain? You wanted to live that moment. You obviously knew it was good for you to do the things that make you happy. What was it that brought you to live here? It was actually work, but it wasn't me. It was my ex-husband. And I'd never had children then, and then we was getting married. And it was like, well, why not? Well, let's try it. It was very, very blasé. It was like, we're going to move to Spain. And the rest is history. I've had three children here, so this is home now. And it was the best decision I ever made. Wonderful. I feel the same way. I feel sorry for those who now have it that much harder to just get up and go with all the new conditions of us not being part of the economic European community. But there you have it. We're lucky we're here already. Yeah. And I'm delighted Blessed. to get to chat with you because when we meet at those networking breakfasts, really is not that much time to actually chat. No. So it's lovely to see what you, you do too. and your, your professionality and your enthusiasm and belief in what you do. Thank you very much for having me. Very reassuring. <laughs> very reassuring. So if you, I'm already thinking like, oh God, tell me, tell me. But if you would like to contact with Louise, please do. Just have a chat because it looks like there are as many ways. You can just basically hold someone's hand to make those changes that you know you want to make. Be back in a moment. Don't go away. All right, guys. So I'm the designated driver tonight. So I'm going to choose the Zero Hero place. So all of my soft drinks are for free. And if you want to go somewhere else, just check out the Facebook, Instagram, or the ZeroHero.es website for any of the bars, discotheques, or restaurants on there. I'm happy to go anywhere you want to go, as long as it's Zero Hero. Joining me now is Christina Gonzalez, and she's here to talk about something called ImmunoCal. It's been out for years, but not everyone's heard about it, and apparently it's got lots of benefits for lots of different things. Christina's got quite involved in this, obviously believes in it implicitly, and although I'm not a doctor, I thought it would be nice to have Christina on the show so she can share the information with you, so you can also then maybe check it out and see if it's something that's of interest. Christina, how lovely to see you again. Thank you very much, Nicole, for having me here today. It's my you. pleasure, and... We bumped into each other because you were explaining to some friends of mine about this immunocal. Mm -hmm. And so it's nice that you can actually tell us a little bit about it because obviously you believe in it. Yes, yes. It's been already three years investigating. Um, even though I'm not a doctor, but I've been related with many doctors right now. And it's just literally a, a scientific discovery. It hasn't been made recently. Um, but what immunocal literally does is raise your glutathione levels, your endogenous in your cells. And after that, if you start to investigate about it, a whole new world in science comes over, which is the science of glutathione. So what is glutathione, if yes. I may ask? Yes. <laughs> glutathione is a molecule, okay? It's um, in every single cell of our bodies, and it literally has over a thousand functions. So. It's the first, first of all, we can keep it to the acronym IDEA, which is a, first it boosts your immune system, actually regulates it, which is very important nowadays, especially after going through all this pandemic and et cetera. Secondly, it um, detoxifies the cells. Literally, it just gets rid of all, all the dirt and everything that's inside your cell. It just detoxifies it naturally to your liver. So your cell then can function correctly, which is very important. Um, then also, it just gives energy to the mitochondria. How many people are nowadays, oh, I can't wake up properly in the morning, I'm so tired. And it's basically because you, your cells are to with toxics in it, so you can't actually function properly. And then it's the master antioxidant. Don't, doesn't our body make this naturally? Is it so important, obviously, for so many things? Yes, exactly. Um, the body, actually, when, when we're born, uh, breast milk has uh, glutathione, it's made by three amino acids, which is uh, uh, glutamate uh, and also with cysteine, okay, which is very important. But cysteine is this building block that we need to create glutathione in our cells, and, but we can't get hold of it naturally anymore. Literally, you need to eat so many raw foods like raw eggs, for example, or raw broccoli, but in kilograms, so that your body actually 
it gets this cysteine inside your cells and then you create your own glutathione. Breast milk is so rich in cysteine and this is where a whole pout of immunocal literally has this amount of cysteine already in it so that it can access your cells. And how do they come about discovering this? I mean, how do, it's like such a, um, well, there's so many unique things about our body. Yes. Well, glutathione was discovered originally in the 1885, so over 150 years ago. But it wasn't until the 70s in McKeel University in Canada, because Immunocal comes from Canada, uh, as an actual supplement, where McKeel University, there were two doctors, which were Gustavo Bonus and Patricia Conchavin, who started investigating about glutathione and the way it should be created in our cells. And that's how, out of serendipity and destiny, they found this compound, which is cysteine, and they had it for 20 years in McKeel University, studying it. And obviously that has now resulted in selling a product, which I understand is natural. It's pharmaceutical, like, level, but it's all natural ingredients. Yes, it's called that sort of a product, it's called supplement, natural supplement, it's called nutraceutical, which means it's completely natural, but at the same time has pharmacology behind it, which means it reacts as some sort of drug, where it's not. It's literally, you can find it in the physician's test reference in the USA, and also in the pharmaceutical compendium in Canada. It's been there for over 25 years. And it's been there because it has already over 80 patents for cancer, radiation, asthma, skin problems, um, many different diseases, and more to come, which is the important. So it covers to help with the symptoms, with the cause of many things. Is it the cause of the symptoms? What does it help combat? Both. Both, and I'll explain why. For prevention is ideal because you keep your body completely clean. All your cells are clean and functioning correctly. What we need to understand about glutathione is that once it's created in your system, in your cells, it repairs the cell, the tissue, the whole organ and the system. So we've had so many different testimonials in fibromyalgia, cancer, asthma, skin. People, not many people know, but skin literally just regenerates within a month. So for in what aspects is that good? I suppose for keeping yourself youthful and exfoliating. <laughs> yes. What it literally does is, uh, first of all, is a major antioxidant. If, you, if you're someone who's aware that you need to have antioxidants in your diet, if you don't have enough glutathione levels, um, then you won't synthesize all of them correctly. So the number one you need to have is glutathione. That's Can you overdose? One. No, because it's a protein. And how does one consume or take this, or is, how is it administered? Administered, yeah. For prevention, normally it's one or two pouches a day of immunocal. That will keep, you will start seeing your hair, or your wrinkles will start decreasing, your nails will start, just for prevention, it's, um, you can actually feel it with more energy, uh, so it's really good. But then if you've got, for example, uh, some sort of a problem in your body, or a chronic disease, for example, skin problem, psoriasis, then we recommend you take four pouches for about two, three months. You'll see after the first two weeks the whole process happening in your, in your skin. And then if you've got some sort of a bigger disease, then we recommend six pouches. Is there any addictive aspect to it? No. So you can just stop taking it from one day to another? Exactly, exactly. For example, myself at home, we all have our Aminocal for the last three years. It's been so incredible because my, my elder son, he's now seven, he started taking it when he was four, he had asthma. So twice a year we had to take him to hospital, typical in the night, you can breathe and everything, and he hasn't had any more at all. He hasn't even been ill in the last three years. It's been incredible. I'm sure there are scientific studies done yes. over this enormous amount of time to also validate yes. the benefits in lots of different illnesses. Yes, we've got all the scientific evidence. If anyone wants information, I can... Uh, send them the PubMed, which is the uh, scientific library worldwide, where there are 180,000 studies about it. Um, and we've got 87 clinical trials, uh, double blind, which is called the golden standard for science. And there are over 50 universities worldwide, including Harvard, Pasteur Institute, 
um, Stanford University. So we're not talking about something which is just out there. It's literally a scientific discovery that everyone should know about. And any adverse reactions detected in that time in certain people, like if you're pregnant or who shouldn't take it, perhaps? Okay, so pregnant women can take immunocal. Uh, born babies with two kilos of weight can actually take immunocal. There's no, uh, it's like taking breast, breast uh, milk, basically. And uh, then only there is only one uh, moment where if you've got just been had an organ transplant because they put you into immune suppressants, then you should wait and talk to your doctor. Because if it's going to boost your immune system, then we have to wait for a bit. So if you're having an immune suppressant, for as we're boosting the immune system, then you, that would be the only, in, the, only one. the only indication as not yeah, to so take it. So they can it. talk to the doctor and the doctor have got all the literature and then they can, they can decide. Yes. And so do you now, you discovered this how? Well, I have a friend, because um, um, Immunical is only sold actually in 14 countries right now. UK, Ireland, uh, also in uh, Spain, Portugal and Italy. Uh, of course, USA, Canada, where it all began, and parts of uh, South America. So I had a friend from Mexico who'd been taking it. She had a problem with a thyroid and she was about to get her thyroid taken off. So she started an immunic heart years ago, and after six months, the whole thing was over for her. She didn't have any more problems. And when I met her about five years ago, she said, it's coming to Spain, you need to try it, and it's really an opportunity to give this out away to the public in, in Europe. So you're obviously enjoying, you've been doing this now for three years? Yes, three years. And you're happy with your personal results? Yes. How about the people, what is the best feedback you've had amongst your the people that you've helped with it? That's basically part of the process because um, you can recommend a restaurant, which is lovely, or a movie or a book, but when you recommend something to someone who's got a pathology and you see how they have a better quality of life, it's just unbelievable, the feeling to be able to help others. And if people would like to speak about this or how, if they'd like to order it, does, how, is that done locally? Yes, it, the, the Immunitech, which is the company, will actually serve it to them. They can get in touch with me so I can help them find the information if they've got any questions because they're dealing through some sort of a, any sort of health issue or just for prevention. Uh, I'm happy. Um, they can send me a WhatsApp or phone me and I'll, be ha I'll, be, I'll try and be as helpful as I can. So it's a, not a range, it's one specific pouch of immunocal? Yes, there is a different types of immunocal and pathologies, so if they want to just push it hard and just try to get rid as soon as possible, because the body auto heals, it just needs the building blocks for it, naturally. Well, there you go. That really made a lot of sense. Thank, Thank you. you so much for taking the time to explain it. And I'm sure a lot of people are very interested to have learned something new or to revalidated something they've heard before. Christina, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Nicole, for having me. My thank absolute you. pleasure. <laughs> Don't go away because more coming up just after the break. Welcome to Lemongrass, Doña Lola. Thank you very much. Hey, hey. Joining me now is a young man called Marcel Salazar. He is from a company that he founded called Strong for Life. And I have no idea where his contact came from. I'm always saying it's because of this one or that one. But Marcel, welcome to the program. And how do... Did we become in contact for you to be here today? So I have a good friend who I was at school with who connected me with you, who now lives in Nurka. Ah, so. Gary Roby. Gary Roby. Hi, yeah, Gary. Exactly. Nice Hi, Gary. Gary. Hi, Gary. <laughs> Hi, Gary. <laughs> we'll do a shout Well, out. thank you very much. That's all right. Well, I'm glad that he sent you along because it's nice to learn more about members of our resident community. Absolutely. I love the name of your brand, Thank Strong you. for Life. Me too. Yes, Me too. I haven't got one muscle in my body. Right. Not overweight, but there's not a muscle in it. I'm, right, that's totally my not true. My scales has told me this. You're right, okay. It's got muscle mass zero. Oh, okay, you've got that officially. Okay, that's Yes, I've, I've seen it on a scales, <laughs> and that was like, 
Yeah. Worrying. Yeah, that could be worrying. That yeah, is exactly. worrying, particularly yeah. get to a certain age, right? And if your muscles aren't working, your bones exactly. won't exactly be held up. Well, you're absolutely right. So this is this is exactly the type of thing that we try to encourage. So I work with my wonderful wife, who is a health coach as well. And uh, if you were to look at her, you would actually see that she is somebody who has a, quite a lot of muscle um, and looks amazing as a result of it. So you probably have more muscle than you think you do, but using them as well is really, really important. Yes, so. now and then I'd like to skip just to see if I still can. Good. Just That's little brave. things just to see if, if it works. That's good. But I am noticing that the, like, if you don't really do anything, yes. everything freezes. It is yes. something to be aware of. And you'll get sore of. as well. And it kind of is a bit of a deterrent. But what I do generally is deal with people who have either a pain or problem, particularly with the back or the spine, etc. And then we do rehabilitation and or then personal training and things like that and health coaching. Sounds exhausting. It is. Expo. I was going to say, tell me why it isn't so people <laughs> get on board. It's supposed to be exhausting <laughs> in the sense that it makes you feel better. Obviously, physical exercise is wonderful. It's fantastic. At the time, it's not so wonderful. And most people who do exercise, particularly training hard, probably feel like it's quite tough. But afterwards, the endorphins and, of course, over time, the benefits you get from it far outweigh that discomfort. So When people talk about physiotherapy, yeah. and you kind of, I think, mostly think about rehabilitation mm. because something has happened, and yet I understand my son-in-law's a physiotherapist, that's actually yeah. not the case, mm. that really anyone should go to a physiotherapist just to see what situation Correct. you're in, because if there's any off balances Correct. or anything's out of line, the earlier you address it, the better probably. Exactly, exactly. So my background is, is very much prevention. So we do things like postural assessment, which you've just mentioned. If you're a sporting person or if you're not a sporting person, but you want to get back to it, it's always good to check in with somebody who is like a body specialist, okay? Now, a lot of people tend to think that doctors are a good way to go but that's not really their remit actually their, their remit is more kind of when there's a problem or medication wise but if you want to return to exercise or you've just got back to exercise and something doesn't feel right a physical therapist like myself is going to be able to assess your alignment your imbalances your pain and then find a solution for that pain or problem and then give you exercises give you treatment I do things ranging from relaxation massage, all the way up to therapeutic deep tissue release, myofascia, if you've ever heard of that. What is myofascia? It's like deep tissue, but it's basically helping the, the tissues underneath the skin to relax because exercise can create tension and helping to relax those make you move more freely, make you feel much more relaxed, um, improve flexibility and performance as well. Well, I mean, you get tension also just sitting at a typewriter for eight hours you a can, day. You can, but in a wrong I way. I mean, it's like all these hunching exactly. over in exactly. the sense I think there are a lot of positions that we take, whether we're active or more sedentary, yep. that aren't necessarily so the best. You raise an absolutely valid point. And I, on my social media, I do quite a lot of uh, videos on guidance on how to use a desk. I tend to see a lot of people who are working like this. Of course, their heads are ending up in their keyboards by the end of the day, and they end up with neck pain as well. So, so there are certain things you can do, like your desk setup, and I give advice on that. There are certain exercises you can do, and I can give advice on that. And a lot of that's available on my social media. Um, but it's very important to do that because you, we're not really designed to sit at desks, but we do that a lot, right? And a lot of people have to. So if you protect your body, by exercising or doing certain movements or being flexible or maintaining a certain level of strength. It helps to prevent a lot of problems, particularly in your neck and headaches and so on and so forth. I, I deal with a lot of that. A lot of people I've seen over the years that suddenly hit the gym mm. and then they do themselves enormous damage mm. because they hadn't, for example, got an evaluation perhaps That's right. previously to see their backbone and their, how they stand to then know which things would be suitable for That's them. That's right. That's right. And very often what they do actually is they tend to go in, they say they haven't done it for 10 years. They go back to it as if they were 10 years younger. And that's always a problem, right? Because you go in thinking, well, when I was 23, this was no problem for me. And then you go and do something wrong. Anyone who's returning to exercise needs to take it slowly. And then your body will tell you very quickly what you can and can't do and how successful you are. And if you get a proper assessment, if you identify what problem areas could exist and then what to do about that, how to protect that, then your likelihood of injuring or getting a lot of pain is massively reduced. 
Where is your practice? Where do you do your... So I'm in Calypso in Calahonda. Okay. So if anyone knows of that area, I'm based very near uh, Doña Lola, for example, resort. I'm up across the road from there. And I've we got have a clinic. Zero Hero partner in Doña Lola's Lemongrass. Sorry, just had to ah, add that in. Very good. Okay, so I'm across the road from them. I know Lemongrass, they're lovely. Um, so yes, I'm across the road and above on the first floor there. We've got our own clinic and studio and treatment rooms and so on. So. And do you do home visits if I necessary? I also do home visits as well, yeah. Yeah, there's me thinking not about it, this rehabilitation and getting myself strong as like massage. <laughs> Just like <laughs> I definitely, a nice relaxing massage. I do have private clients for, for massage as well, which is And nice. what brought you over to you and your family to live here? Good question. Well, my, my parents lived here already and uh, we had the choice to come and live here. And we thought, well, in comparison to living in southwest London, which was a very nice area indeed, uh, we just thought, you can't beat the Costa del Sol, and no regrets, zero regrets living here. We absolutely love it. So How long have you been here? Five years in September. Do you have any integration with the Spanish world, or are you completely set up in the international setup? I try to integrate as much as I can. Admittedly, being a Chilean descent, I should be a fluent Spanish speaker, but I'm not yet. I'm working on it. But Five you're working on it. I'm working on it. I mean, you're working on it. Well, I have what kids. They all for? speak Spanish fluently. My wife is practically speaking better Spanish than me, which is a bit terrible. But anyway, that's my fault. Um, but yes, I, uh, I, I definitely, we love, the, the kids are in local schools and uh, no, we integrate as much as we can doing community things as well. So yeah. And it's nice that it. you work with your wife that she can complement what you do in that 100%. health aspect. Absolutely. Well, she was formerly a pharmacist and just redirected towards becoming a health coach because the application she felt was much better working with individuals, in particular women, to really help protect their bodies and build them back up from whatever it might be, whether it be the aging process or postpartum or things like that. So it complements perfectly for me because if I, there may be certain things that I couldn't do going forward with a female client, that works perfectly with, with my wife, so it's, it's ideal. I know, it's nice because also you get to see each other, you get to yes, chat about what you do, and that do, has to be healthy. Do. And of course, let's hope it's healthy, right? Because sometimes when you work together and live together, it could be problematic. Well, it sounds like each one of you got your own we area of expertise, yeah, no, we've so got that our... you're not overstepping <laughs> each other and what you guys do. I do my best not to overstep. It's important for my health that I don't, so that's... In, that's and that's... I'm sure it's vice versa as well. No, no, she does whatever she wants to, that's fine. <laughs> good girl, good girl. Happy wife, happy life, all that thing, you know? <laughs> It's just so true. It is. It's, it's just so true. true. <laughs> I'm not going to argue with you there. Don't, don't. It's true. Absolutely. Wonderful. So it's really nice to meet you. Pleasure. It's nice to know that professionals are out there like yourself. And mm -hmm. as we often say, many people do the same job, the same line, but each person has their own, own specific way of doing it. Absolutely. And the uniqueness. And it's lovely to meet you, Marcel. Lovely You're absolutely you. enchanting. Thank so you very is your much. wife. <laughs> and next time. We'll have her on. We'll have her on. Yeah, exactly. Like so watch this space. <laughs> yes, because she's sitting in the background. Going, no. no! <laughs> <Yeah>. However, <laughs> yeah. got my Good eyes watching. on you. <laughs> Marcel, thank you for coming on the program. Thank you so much for having me. And best of luck. I look forward. I'm sure we'll bump into each other I hope so. more now that we've actually met. Good. Hashtag better together. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Don't go away. Back in just a moment. Zero Hero, welcome to the Secret Garden. We welcome you. I love supporting our local charities because what else can we do? People in need and so many different needs. One of my pet charities is the Butterfly Children's Charity, Deborah. Probably because my children have such beautiful skin and now my grandchildren and I think it just resonates even more that how lucky we are when our children are born basically with everything in place and their ten fingers and toes. And so to know that there are children who are born with an affliction that is so painful and so visual 
and so distressing, not just for the child, but for their family. I think they deserve our support, particularly funding, because they need so many bandages every day and God knows what else. But to find out more about it, we're welcoming to the programme for the first time to the Set in Public Menthea to talk on behalf of the Butterfly Children Charity, an upcoming golf tournament where we can participate and contribute. So Menthea, welcome to Marbella now. Thank you so much, Nicole. Thank you so much for having us here in your program. My pleasure. You've been with the Butterfly Children Charity now, now what is it, a year? A year. It was a year on the 15th of July. I had that feeling <laughs> that I've been seeing you come a couple of times with Evanina yes. and I've seen you sitting behind the scenes, but today, oh a year God. on, here yeah. you are. Well done, you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. The Butterfly Children Charity welcomes all kinds of events that we can all do ourselves Absolutely. to raise funds and awareness. Yes. But your golf tournaments are quite mm. famous now. They are. The annual Aloha Golf Tournament, which is celebrated this year, its first one without oh, my dear Uncle Don Fisher. We missed so, him so much. I know. We it's really just, did. Um, I know. yes, to lost friends. Mm. But you have one coming up now at the Marbella Club. Exactly. When's that? It's in August. It's on the 9th of August. It's on a Wednesday at 9 a.m. And uh, we're playing Texas Scramble. Do you play golf, Nicole? No, I no? don't. And I have no <laughs> idea what a Texas Scramble is. Tell well, me more. It's, uh, it's interesting because it's uh, mostly what, when you do a charity event, it's the game that it's most played because they're played in teams. So you can either have a two, three or a four a player in a team and uh, the best shot is the one that counts so it's not just an individual and um, very competitive so it's more to sort of collaborate with uh, Debra as a charity so more people enjoy. get to have a good time even if they're not the best players exactly because they can they have one good one there to <laughs> stand up for the team. and it's teamwork isn't it wonderful to, to sort of you know enjoy and is it, it mixed men and women in it the is. team it's mixed uh, men and women and we give buggies or boogies how do we buggies. call buggies and a picnic and uh, and yes it's quite a challenging golf course because it's quite hilly uh, so it'll be fun i'm sure it'll be fun yes and is it already too late now to actually participate is there room for more teams to join there is, in? There is room for more teams to join in. It's six, 76 in total that we're allowing. And at the moment, we're half more or less. So, yeah, the more uh, people that uh, can come and participate, And if someone wants to come individually, will you put them with a exactly. team? Exactly. We'll look for a, for a team. So for you don't have person. to have a ready-made team no, if not you play all. golf and you'd like to be part of this? Yes. Can I ask what it costs to participate? It's 120 euros, including the boogie and the picnic. And we have wonderful prizes as well. Is it 18 holes or it's nine? It's an 18 hole. Wow, so you get to play 18 holes, yes. you get a buggy, you get a picnic, you get to meet new people. Exactly. And you get to support the charity. Yes. I mean, that definitely sounds worthwhile. It is, absolutely. And then we have the dinner gala on Saturday, the 12th of August, in Aloha Club. So that is also, you know, you can come either to both events or, or just one. But uh, the gala is it, going to be quite fun as well. Uh, we are uh, given a lovely dinner. It's 70 euros, uh, Nicole. And, and there are still tickets alive, left. And there are still tickets uh, Okay, well, that's nice that. because that's coming up in a couple of weeks' time. Mm. So you've all got time to either sign yourself up for golf or go to the gala dinner or both. Or both. Or just contribute because yes. mm. the money is so well placed in the sense that we have a lot of charities. I have we to do. say that the Butterfly Children Charity is one of the most transparent. Mm. You can go to the website and you see exactly what is spent where. Yes. And I find that very reassuring personally. It is, very much. And Absolutely. the teams that you maintain mm. are admirable. Do you want to just give us a little outline as to what the funds are used for? Of course. Well, uh, what we do, um, Nicole, is as soon as a hospital called us with a newborn baby, we, in 24, 48 hours, we send our professional nurse um, and a psychologist and a social worker to work with that child, newborn, um, with the skin condition uh, of epidermosal ruyosa, which is butterfly skin condition. And we support them and advise them from the moment they're born to their end of care lives. No? Uh, we also um, uh, stay with them in every stage of their lives. So when from the hospital they go home, we are there 
with them when they go to nurse, uh, when they go to school, you know, in every stage of their, of their lives we are together with them. We also use the funds for investigation. We want to live, our dream is to live in a world without EB. As you just said, it's an extremely painful disease. I mean, the, these children are born with extremely um, painful uh, wounds and blisters that are made with just a slight touch. They lack, let's say, the glue that sticks the layers of skin together. So as we have a, a you know, very... Yeah, they don't have any of that elasticity whatsoever. They don't whatsoever. have any of that elasticity. Their lack of a protein. Like a very old a person in the sense of skin's like those really old, old people that the skin that becomes the skin, translucent, yeah, transparent. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And even, I remember the first campaigns that I saw and you'd see that trying to put a child in a car oh. seat mm. and for and us you don't think about the, it but you you yes, can't even put them in a cannot. seat the clothing no. yeah absolutely. always in bandages always and you know the, i mean for for me really they're angels on earth not only the child but the parents you don't want to create pain to your own child and they have to because they have to be bandaged every day and uh, you know the cleaning and the taking care of that skin and um, uh, wounds and blisters every day is between three and four hours Nicole so imagine for those parents to create pain by removing the bandages putting some ointment on putting another bandage on so, so really, yes, it's, um, it's a very painful disease that um, we try and support and make their life as easy as we can. There's also a lot of psychological very much. aspect to this for the children, of for course, the families. And the I know families. that you give a lot of support in we that do. respect too. From the moment, because imagine the pre during the pregnancy, these moms, they have a perfect normal pregnancy. So you don't make up your mind that your child is going to come with any a skin condition problem or any disease or any illness and so you think you're going to have a completely um, healthy baby and when it's born you get this you know tremendous news that you have to deal with it for the rest of your lives it's and it hasn't got any cure at the moment this disease so the psychological for the parents and the child, of course, it's very important. And we do have specialist uh, psychologists, so we try and raise funds to be able to pay, um, you know, the salary of our psychologists and our specialist nurses and the social workers. The social workers are extremely important because they take care of, uh, to talk to, with the schools, with the national health uh, program, you know, and, and the government for them to to be given what uh, they should, which is the bandages, the ointments, and the medical care. Right, because you need a whole team of lobbyists, basically, absolutely, just to keep begging. Because if you don't, if they say if you don't ask, you don't get. You but don't it's this get consistent, insistent. Completely. I mean, the, 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 our, our our colleagues, our team work of social workers, they they make an an amazing, an amazing. So, if job. anyone out there has any ties or sway in the health ministry, please, yes, please. do make the bandages yeah. at least yeah. covered by the social security. Absolutely. Because it's just an endless, endless, endless pit of spending money. Yes. And as you say, it's not something that affects a financially secure family mm. and not a poor family. Yeah. Anyone. Anyone. Is it a genetic thing? It is a genetic. Uh, one out of 227 people have this gene. But we, we are not aware of it, um, so uh, it, it, it goes through families. Excuse my English, Nicole. No, no, your English sometimes. is wonderful. I didn't uh, even think you weren't know, English. So it, <laughs> it, it comes through the families, but yes, the mom and the dad normally have the gene, and then it's where the high percentage of having a child with EB. Deborah yes. Spain, Butterfly Children Charity Spain, exists because of a young boy from Marbella. Exactly. Who was Inigo. born with this and their family yes. had no idea no what idea. was going on. And it was thanks to Deborah UK because Deborah UK is very strong. Um, so Nieves, who is a president and the mum of Inigo, went to uh, Deborah UK and asked for help because here in the hospital they didn't know what was going on with So Inigo. she had to just find out find herself out. and we didn't have that access to internet. No, then, not at all. But we Imagine do now. 35 years I think Inigo is now. 
So, so absolutely. And then when she came back to Spain, she said, I am not going to allow any more families to go through what I have gone through with this child. Yeah, because it's not only living through what's going on, but the not knowing, not knowing initially the even yeah. where to begin must be just terrifying. Imagine of your own child. No, it's, it's very, very hard, very hard. But thank God, you know, Debras exist in 50 countries. So here we are, uh, you know, trying to help and to make their lives as easy as possible. Is there within a that pool of funds for this investigation? Yes, we do that. So Deborah worldwide we work together. is working together to see what kind of solution if Absolutely. possible. Absolutely. Yes, completely. We also have two charities, shops, uh, Nicole, that you I was know, just going to talk about those. Exactly. You know, that, that is wonderful. You know, if people have on their homes things that they don't use or, you know, clothes uh, or even toys that, you know, children grow so fast that even toes, toys, you know, we're always welcome to, to uh, be I have donate. to say, I am a big client mm -hmm. of the Butterfly Children shops. You've got one in San Pedro, yes. there's one in the post office road in Marbella. The quality of the people, of the mm -hmm. donations is wonderful. It's I pick wonderful. up loads of, not that you need a brand, but loads of yes. brand things at mm. cheap prices. My beautiful black velvet cape was a steal. <laughs> so I do highly recommend not only donations, but if you want to buy yourself something, it's amazing how much you can get and mm. the quality and the design. Plus, you're not following the fashion. You get those unique pieces. True, that, absolutely. Um, so definitely worthwhile going to the charity shops. Yes. We could also help by just donating money. Yes, absolutely. You, you, you could. We have a Butterfly uh, Children um, web page that, you know, you can go through there. You can call us. Uh, companies as well, for example, is the first year, Nicole, that this uh, golf tournament, because we have collaborators that uh, can use each T, so each 18 T, to expose their publicity. And we have it complete this year. So we have 18 companies collaborating with Debra. So we are very proud of, of ourselves and of the people helping I was saying, us. You should feel proud and they should feel proud as very well because much. it is something that between us, yes. obviously, that we mm. will get somewhere. Yes. I know the first time that I was asked to talk about this way back on I Talk Radio 13 years ago, it was like, oh, that's too horrible. And then Morris painful. said to me, as a journalist, it's your obligation. And now I realize mm. that it is all of us together that we can share information. No family should have a child and not know what's going on. And it might be just you watching this and hearing about it that you can say, well, maybe he's got that butterfly skin syndrome. So mm. um, hashtag better together. Before we finish, one quick reminder about the dates of yes. the event and how people can participate in okay. this golf tournament. Well, the golf tournament, it's on Wednesday, the 9th of August, 9 a.m. And the dinner gala is on Saturday, the 12th of August, 9 p.m. too. So it's just get in contact with Menthea or the Deborah offices here in Marbella. If you want further confirmation or you want to book your ticket for dinner or if you'd like to get involved with the golf tournament. Really proud of all of you. So Thank grateful you. to all of you for everything you do. We have to all count our blessings. I don't think we realize half the time mm. just how lucky we are. So if we can help others and have a good time, why not? Thank Would you, you so much. Thank Gracias. you. Gracias. Thank you, Nicole. Okay, we're getting through the program, but we're not finished yet. I'm going to bring my interns onto the show. Mwahaha. <laughs> After the break. Hey, hey. I thought it would be nice, as we are in the throes of summer, to bring my first intern onto the program, Sophia. She lives here, she's grown up here, she's been to school here, and at the beginning of the year, she started coming along to the recordings of the program just to get an idea of other things apart from school. Sophia, this is what, your second or third time now in front of the I camera? it's the third time. It's the third time. <laughs> yeah. But you know, I'm going to look back at them and to compare. <laughs> do you feel that you've progressed? progressed? Do you feel, yeah. how yes. do, what do you think you've changed since the first program that I shoved you in front of the cameras? Definitely more comfortable, <laughs> I think. Yeah, definitely for sure. And just, uh, yeah, just more vocal. <laughs> more vocal? Yes. yes. <laughs> You've enjoyed the, uh, we've been to some events as well, haven't mm -hmm. we? Those yeah. have been fun. Yeah, those are really fun. <laughs> You're kind of vocal there. I mean, you yeah. don't seem to be shy in general. No. But no. it is different, isn't it, being in front of a camera? Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. So, so what plans do you have over the summer? 
So I've had a few friends, friends visit me from abroad, uh, from the US, from Dubai and from the UK. Um, one of them actually arrived today, so after this I think I might go see them. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like fun. So yeah, um, and yeah, I've just been at the beach, a bit browner. <laughs> Have you had any news yet on your exam results? When did you get to find those out? I've two weeks I think on the 24th of August so maybe two or three weeks I remember being here when I was waiting for my <laughs> O-level results and that was just like mm -hmm. the day I'm waiting to bring the school so do you have to go online to find out what's the so I go online to find out my results on the 24th and then at some point during that week I have to actually go pick them up like the certificate <laughs> well I'm sure you did really really well yeah, I think so. and I look forward to going to celebrate with you when you've got your results <laughs> those fabulous results. Do you know what you want to do when you go back to study in September? Yes, um, definitely uh, interior design sort of side of things. So very artistic and creative. <laughs> That's wonderful. Yeah. And it's nice that you can follow that passion. Mm. Well, yeah, I'm sure. delighted to have you with me on the programme. Thank you so much. It's been very enjoyable. <laughs> Love getting that insight of youth, which is always fabulous. Well, well done you. Thank you. And I look forward to hearing those exam results. I know they're going to be wonderful. Although at the end of the day, when you grow up, you realise that the results of school are very, really don't really pay you that much. It doesn't make any difference if you didn't pass, which is the upside if you didn't get the, re the results that you anticipated. I thought I would share with you now just a two minutes of the renovated new look of the Melia Don Pepe. I actually went along for the global gift gala, but decided that I would not get in the rummage of all those people taking photographs of the famous people who came over because I found it far more, far more interesting to actually just look and see how the hotel has changed. I started going there as a child in 1965 when I was a baby with my parents and then ever, every summer since. So to see how the hotel has progressed is actually quite lovely because it maintains its look, it maintains its charm and most importantly those spectacular gardens are still spectacular. So although I'm not going to show you the Global Gift Gala, I am going to show you what the Don Pepe looks like now. So you should go check it out for yourselves. is proud to welcome the zero heroes so come on in and enjoy free soft drinks for anyone who is the designated driver thank you nicole so 
here we are at Everest. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Stickers going up. Hey, yeah. My name is Govinda. I'm from Everest. Uh, welcome to Zero Hero, the Everest Fusion. To, uh, enjoy your cocktails, drinks, and happy hour as well. And food, of course, is delicious. Thank you. <laughs> And to finish the program, I also wanted to bring Selena onto the show again. She is my intern from the Netherlands. Thanks to Joost Young and Joyce of Young Leren, every year I get to meet the most fabulous youngsters who come to Spain because they want a little bit of practical experience. And this year, Selena chose me. I'm so delighted. <laughs> How's it going? You've been, what, two and a half months now? Yeah, almost three months. I almost think. three months. Yeah. Do you think you've learned anything? What's changed since you arrived? Mm, well, I think I'm a little bit more open. Also, if we go somewhere and I talk better with people than in, in the beginning. And also, I'm still trying to learn my Spanish, but I think it's getting a little bit better. And you're having a good time as well. Your family's yeah. been over. Mm -hmm. Happy birthday. <laughs> now 18, started yes. at just 17. You had your 18th birthday here. Mm -hmm. It was very lovely because my family came to visit and we just had a nice day together. So it was really good. What things would you recommend other people coming to Spain to do if they're in Marbella, what, like, like you did with your mm -hmm. family? What things do you think they should definitely do? Well, we didn't do that much because it was, the weekend was really hot, but we rented a boat, so that was really nice. And after the night, we had some pizza on the beach. So my dad and grandpa got some pizzas and we made like a little picnic. Oh, that's a fun thing to do. Mm -hmm. Did you go to the old town at all? Yeah, we did. We uh, were at the Plaza de los Naranjas. Uh -huh. And it was really nice. They really loved it. <laughs> Wonderful. And you are doing ever so well. You're here till October. So people will get a chance to see more of Selena. Obviously, I don't know with Sophia with carrying on her studies in September, but hopefully we still get that input of our youth. I can only highly encourage other companies to accept, welcome an intern, because I know personally getting that youthful insight and feedback is fundamental so we don't become old fuddy-duddies and that we can be up to date with technology and Selena and Sophia both make lovely videos for the social media. Well done on your new Zero Hero things. <laughs> Liking that very much. Talking of Zero Hero, just in case you haven't heard about it, our community supports road traffic safety awareness and from the Zero Hero website, zerohero.es, there is a list of participating venues that offer free soft drinks to the designated drivers. It's become quite a good food guide. In fact, we've just rebranded in orange, yellow, uh, sorry, in gold and white. So it's very cosmopolitan. And places such as the casino, the playwright, the harbour, the Hogan stand, Wheels Cafe, Urban Chai Cafe, Urban Cafe, many places. Go to our website, zerohero.es and look for links. And remember, if you've got a local place that you think would like the extra publicity by getting involved and would like to do something good for the community, do ask them to get involved too. Just a final reminder now of some events coming up. As we heard, you've got the Butterfly Children Charity Golf Tournament. The 9th of August, the Wednesday, is for the golf tournament. And then the Saturday, for the gala dinner in the Aloha Club. And then on the 4th of August, coming up before that, we've got a gala in age of Fundatu, which is a fabulous local association supporting youngsters who need opportunities to excel in life and in careers. So that's the 4th of August, organised by Helena Olthina's Sinergias Femininas. Do get your ticket for that because that's going to be a fun dinner. Again, doing something nice to raise funds and awareness for those who need it most. Take care of yourselves. Thank you so much for joining us to meet the members of our tourist and resident community who come to our city so we can support each other and perhaps even help each other and collaborate. And if not, just make some nice new friends. See you soon and thank you for watching. Hasta pronto.